some people think that uh, repairing a quaderno is uh, uh, is hard. Well, uh, today I wanted to show that uh, it isn't. Uh, I wanted to do a logic board repair, but sadly I don't have the capacitors. So we're going to stick with a very simple uh, hard drive repair. So let me just clear up the bench here. So this is the one that I recently acquired. Um, I just did the um, hinges on it, so now it uh, opens and closes properly. It is missing a few uh, trim pieces, but it's not a problem for me. Uh, let's just jump right in and uh, uh, take it apart. So let me just zoom right in. So we're going to start by removing the keyboard. And to do that, we need to take off two screws. One is in here. It's this one. And then there's another one, which is longer, hidden under this trim piece here. To get this piece off, I usually use my nail and just slides off easily. This screws here, as I said, it's a bit longer. And there it is. So to get the keyboard off, I get a flat blade and I just pry it in the corner. There are four tabs. Usually I just get one off. There it is. One, it's the second one. Third, and the fourth one. I just lift it up slightly, remove the tabs on the front, on the top, slide it forward, and then we can remove the two connectors. There it is, keyboard's off. Next, we're going to remove this piece here. To do that, I'm going to remove the three screws that are inside the battery compartment. This one here is long, it's very long and the other two are short and they're actually the same. There we go. Okay, so next we have three screws in the back. These are also short and they are all the same. Okay, so I can open it up. Uh, with one hand, I keep the, uh, the plastic, this plastic piece here attached to the chassis. Now we can disconnect the flat cables. I usually start with these two. This goes to the numpad, and this one here goes to the display. Now, be very, be very careful. There is an EMI filter that's usually glued down to the battery compartment. So if you pull too hard, you may risk stripping the display cable. So the, the filter is right here. I don't think you can see it, but it's located right here. I just get a flat blade screwdriver and unstick it. It also looks, the adhesive is usually very strong, so, okay. This has been removed, now I can position it like that, so we can remove the small display cable, and there is also a grounding cable. This is held down with a Phillips screw. We're going to remove that as well. Let's see if I can, if I can zoom in to show you a bit more. There it is. And here's the screw. This is a slightly smaller one than uh, the other screw. We, the other screws we removed earlier. So let's see if we can get some more light on it. We can remove the top piece and set it aside. This is the hard drive. Um, to remove that, actually, let me just okay. To remove that, a couple of screws and another grounding cable. So we're going to start with the two screws here. It's very simple. Then there's the grounding screw. 
This is a slightly longer one that, uh, than the one we moved before, and the head is slightly smaller. Okay, so we can now lift up the drive and tilt it like that. And we're going to detach the flat cable. All right, here's the hard drive. Now, if you wanted to remove the logic board now, uh, all you need to do is remove this screw here and detach these three cables. So one is a flat, the other two are just very simple cables. You can then remove this um, plastic uh, cover here and you should be able to just lift it up and slide off. Oh, also, you need to remove the, um, the uh, four screws that cover the that hold the connectors to the um, to this metal plate. But we'll do that in another video as soon as I get the all the components. Okay, so here's the drive. It's the same kind that's used by Apple laptops, and I have a video on repairing them for, for the Mac. There are four T6 screws. And actually, you can try and spin it up now, um, if you want to hear what it does, it should click. You should do like uh, three or four clicks. To remove the um, data cable, I get a um, small pointy thing, and I just slide in. So in this way, I don't damage the connectors, and I don't bend the pins on the drive. Let me just get a, a very simple USB interface on it. There it is, and let's try and give it some power. So, see if you can hear that. Huh, doesn't want to spin up today. These clicks um, mean that the head is stuck to the uh, to the rubber bumper. So let me show you that. Let me just zoom in again. So we're going to remove the four T6 screws that hold the top cover. Okay, so now there's a gasket that usually sticks to the top cover, so I just usually get in and free it up on all four sides. Okay, there it is, I usually make sure, yeah, it's stuck on the bottom, come on, okay, so let me just put it back so it'll go in nice, okay. Just get a piece of paper. So we can set it down. Okay, so here's the drive. Now, if we try and spin it up again, you will see that the heads don't move. Hopefully. Oh, this interface kind of sucks. I think it's got a broken solder joint somewhere. You see, they don't move. Now watch that. Oh, it's actually very stuck. Now if I try and restart it. No, okay, there we go. So the problem is that the rubber inside here goes sticky and keeps, the, um, keeps, this, keeps this piece here attached. Let me just try and zoom in keeps this thing here attached to the rubber. So this rubber here, it's all, it's all gone. What I usually do is get a piece of tape and stick it in between. So let me see if I can try and do that on camera. So I try and stick it on this piece here. Okay. So I usually use um, blue tape. Uh, I'm gonna try today with um, some regular scotch tape instead. 
I'm just gonna place it right here. Let me just get a knife. I'm trying to do this in uh, in one take to show you really how easy it is. So um, I'm just gonna cut about this much. And yes, I'm using the hard drive cover as a cutting board, which is, I don't think it's very recommended. Okay. I think I got it too wide. Okay, and just trim that. And here's our piece of tape. So let me just zoom in again. And let's apply it. So I'm just gonna stick it down. Damn it, I'm gonna park the head so that the flag goes into the slot. Okay. Perfect, get the head off. Try to tidy it up. Okay, let's see how it performs. Perfect. So if we, okay, it parks. And if we start up again, there we go. So I think that this drive here is uh, is fixed. Now all we have to do is uh, reinstall the cover, tighten all the screws, and uh, mount it back inside the. Actually, it goes in this way, and mount it back inside the the the, the, the laptop, and it should be all good to go. I won't bore you with that. You just have to follow uh, everything I did in reverse. Uh, another uh, another pro tip. Uh, most quadernos have broken hinges and all the plastic material falls underneath the drive. Some of that is conductive, so you might as well take a uh, inspection around here, especially where, where the sticky bits are, and make sure there is there is no uh, there are no plastic residues around, because that can short the the logic the, the border that's on the drive. So that's pretty much it. Uh, another video will follow up with the logic board repair, but uh, for now, thank you for watching.